Good morning, friends, wherever you are, all over the world. I was surprised to see the other day in some analytics that I have a lot of folks who visit from uh, Finland. Finland, go figure. And, of course, Australia and the U.K., so you folks are definitely everywhere, India as well. Welcome to all of you. And wherever you are, I hope you're having a, a good cup of, uh, of Joe or whatever your favorite beverage is. Oh, yeah. Today I'm having uh, my coffee out of Jerry's Fish Room Cup. Jerry's Fish Room. Jerry Martin, one of our uh, moderators. Be sure to visit his channel. And it is iced coffee because... It is so darn hot in Tennessee right now. <laughs> the heat doesn't bother me as much as the humidity. And uh, for those of you that watch that uh, video on preparing the substrate, I don't know if you could tell, but I was, I was actually in a state of distress. <laughs> it's like 85% humidity, about 90, 95 degrees. And even though I was in the shade, uh, it was... It was a bit brutal, so. All right, let's see who we have here. Let's take a look at the group. What wonderful group of people are on the chat here. Some of you are early birds. Trenton W is here, and Trav the Cyclic Keeper, love that name. And let's see, good morning to you as well. And let's see, Cat Sailor. Hey, Cat Sailor, glad you're here. Michael Lotonero, good morning to you as well. And Elizabeth, hey, Elizabeth, have I not seen you in a while? Were you here last week? Good, good to have you here. And Z Zip, and who else is a lot of Sunder? Hey, Sunder, good to see you here. And no, that we're still in the heat wave, my friend. I have a tank here in the, um, I have a, a, a tank to my left that runs at about um, 76 degrees, about 76 degrees. And the water from the faucet, just pure cold water, was about 79, 80. So I had to wait for the faucet water to, to cool down before I could add it to the... <laughs> I was about to add some ice cubes to it. So uh, water out of the faucet at 79 to 80 degrees. How's that? Don't have to use your hot water heater when you're filling up your, your uh, tanks. Hey, Chris G. And uh, hey, Jerry. Good to see you, buddy. Glad you're here. John Wallace in the house. All right. Zen Ginger. Zen Ginger's around. Hey, Zen Ginger. Good to see you here, Matty. And... Whips World and Robin Rayner. We've got some new names and some great names. Jane Rose is here. Tea time here in the UK. Hey, Jane. I was just at the UK. Loved it there. Loved the people. Loved everything about it. So um, we have a lot to talk about. Let's go ahead and uh, do the official start of the live stream. If you're new and you like the content of this channel, uh, please be sure to hit that sub button and the bell and thumbs up. I think about 30% of the view viewers that watch my videos are subscribed. So uh, let's see if we can get the channel up over uh, 50,000. That would be that would be epic for sure. And a couple quick uh, shout outs, of course, to my uh, wonderful uh, uh, channel sponsor, The Cichlid Shack, James Largo over in Tempe, Arizona. If you, get, uh, if you get products from him, like food and supplies, use Shack Attack 10. That is the channel's uh, special code, and you'll get 10% off. On fish, use Shack Attack 15 if the order is over 15 if the order is over $100. And remember, it doesn't apply to shipping. He doesn't make money on shipping. He just passes the, the cost of it over to you. And what you see scrolling on the screen are a list of some fish that he posted on Instagram. And those are some, uh, those are some cichlids. He's got a lot more than cichlids, right? He's got um, all kinds of fish there. But these are some fish that he, ju he just got in. And you can see on there, there's got to be a fish or two on that list that you want. So uh, 
Check out the Cichlid Shack for sure. Big shout out to them. Also, a big shout out to uh, the moderators for the wonderful job they do and to Aquarium uh, Co-op for their backup as well. So, a lot to go over today. I've been uh, really busy. And I'll tell you, in, in the different jobs that I did related to the 300-gallon, uh, the, plumbing, the plumbing was hard. I mean, the cutting, uh, the preparing. I mean, I, I showed you, I think, last week, the preparing of each of the uh, PVC pipes to make sure that they're smooth and deburred, right? The gluing, uh, the cementing of the pipes, water testing, the stress of doing the first water test, which always has... Always has a glitch or two if you do a sump, you, you know that. Always has a glitch. Getting the glitches addressed and then, re, you know, like draining the tank, refilling it again, retesting it. Uh, all of that was very stressful, labor-intensive, time-intensive. But big relief to say that the plumbing is behind me. The sump is dialed in. It's working perfectly. And the substrate for the most part, 180 pounds of it is in the aquarium. Uh, now, the next step is I'm going to be moving over substrate from the 210, which you can see here. So I can get this. This substrate in the 210 is going to be brought over as much of it as I can. is going to be brought over along with those rocks, is going to be brought over to the 300 gallon. That's going to bring over the mother load of uh, beneficial bacteria. So whenever you do something like that, you just have to really make sure that the tank that you're adding it to has been treated with something like Prime or Fritz Complete before you make the move or else you'll kill off the bacteria. So there's uh, Fritz Zyme 7, and there's, um, there's also some, some uh, Fritz Complete in the 300, so it's good. And I'm going to add the substrate, the rocks. I'm going to bring over the FX6, and I'm going to bring over a big bag of crushed coral that I have in the sump under the 210, and I'm going to put it under the 300. So that, I'm hoping, is going to be enough. Let me get back. I'm hoping that's going to be enough to uh, to provide the benef beneficial bacteria necessary so that all the fish come over without any stress. Uh, I'm still debating whether I'm going to, going to be removing the uh, substrate with the fish in the tank, or maybe I'll put all the fish in a tub, remove the substrate, and then put them back in the tank. Uh, I just got just got to figure what'll be less stressful overall. Like moving fish from a tank to a tub to a tank. I don't know. Uh, then again, I might put a divider in the 210, put a divider in, and then remove the substrate from one side, and then let the fish all come back to the other side, add the divider again, and then repeat the process on the other side. So there's a couple a couple different ways I can go. I'm still contemplating how to do it. And then bring over the fish. Now, I have to move quickly on this because I added the Fritzyme 7. And if you add beneficial bacteria in a bottle to an aquarium, you have to provide a food source. And the food source, of course, is ammonia. That is the waste of the fish. So I can either add uh, a product called Jumpstart from Fritz, which is basically ammonia in a bottle, to feed that bacteria, or... I can start bringing fish over right away. I don't necessarily like adding ammonia, at least not from a bottle. I'd rather have that. The, I'd rather have the fish at it. So um, I've got to move quickly. I can't let the um, the beneficial bacteria that I added to the 300. I can't let it die off because of lack of food. Uh, it's uh, definitely not going to die from a lack of oxygen. The two outputs on the uh, 300 are doing a great job in stirring up the surface. And so I have a lot of oxygenation, a lot of oxygen being added to the tank, which uh, beneficial bacteria needs to develop. When people are, are, are cycling or starting up a tank, definitely put your, if you're going to have wave makers breaking up the surface, put them in. 
uh, put in your bubblers, put in whatever you're going to do, because the more oxygen, uh, the better for that, uh, for the, for the aerobic beneficial bacteria, which is what most of you are working with. You're not, most of you are not working with the anaerobic. So that for me, the transferring of the fish for me is the scariest part of the whole process. The plumbing and the dialing of the, of the, of the sump and the seeing leaks and then fixing them, uh, washing, washing, rinsing 180 pounds of substrate in 85% humidity, 95 degrees. Those were hard steps, but on a whole different level, the hardest step is bringing over the fish and keeping an eye on them and keeping your fingers crossed that you don't see signs of distress. Even though you've tested the water and you're, you know, your nitrite zero, your ammonia zero, and still, still, just like when you bring a fish in from the store, you keep an eye on them. And, and I tell you, I just, I just love these fish. I just can't see, I don't want to lose any of them. And one of the things I'm, that make this whole, makes this whole process a little bit difficult is they're doing so well in the 210 that you're, you're kind of messing with success. Uh, at the same time, I know that they're going to thrive in this seven foot across tank. I mean, an extra hundred gallons of water. That's a lot of extra dilution that's going to keep, uh, you know, keep waste products, keep things like nitrates down when you have another hundred gallons plus the 40 gallon sum of dilution. So at any rate, that's some of the stuff that's going on in my mind. And and that's why I called this that's why I called this live stream the scariest part because this is where I really test it, you know, and make sure that there isn't anything unusual in the 300. Let me see if I can show you the 300. I'm kind of backed up against it. Let me see if I can maybe move the gear around a little bit so I can give you a good shot of it, which means I'm going to have to uh, shake up the, uh, the tripod just a little bit. So hang in there. So there she is, seven feet across. Two Cichet nine point zero pumps, pumping water from the forty gallon breeder. So when I put these rocks in, and I add these rocks to it, I think it's going to look really good with those gray rocks. And there's a, um, there's a location near the house where I ride my bike where they have a lot of gray rocks scattered around that fall down from this uh, little cliffside. I might just go and grab some of those as well. Just depends. But I think those those rocks will look really good. And keep in mind, the substrate is going to be um, the substrate in the 300 is going to look a lot darker than this. When I add the uh, when I add the substrate from the 210, it's going to go a lot darker. I might even add some some more black, some more black substrate because. The, uh, the black color, I feel, brings out uh, 
brings out better color in the fish. When I've used the white substrate with African cichlids, they tend to white to, to wash out a little bit. As you can, you, you can, I don't know if you can hear it in the background, but it's completely quiet, except for the water breaking on the surface. So it's running the way it's supposed to run. I can't wait to see fish jumping around in there. All right. Let me get everything back in position. All right, so what are your thoughts on that? Let's get your thoughts here in the uh, in the chat. And what do you think about the uh, the the process, the step by step process I'm going to be using? Have you have you transferred fish from one of your tanks to the other? You transferred fish from one tank to another. What was your experience? How did that How did that go? Actually, let me know. And let me know what you ran into. Let me know what kind of situation you ran into here in the chat. I'd like to uh, I'd like to hear about it. When I say we all learn from each other, I mean we all learn. We definitely all learn from each other. So if you've done that, if you've actually moved fish from an established tank in your fish room to a new tank, let me know what steps or precautions you took, and let me know what was the outcome, how how that worked out. Just share it. You know, share it here in the chat. Share it in the comments under the. Uh, the final post of the video, and I would really uh, appreciate it. So, <clears throat> looks like we have somebody from Belgium, Erna. Hey, hey, Erna from Belgium. Love to visit your country some sometime. I've heard, I've heard it's beautiful. Hey, Zen, Ben, just curious. Do you test your rocks if you find them while foraging, or do you just hope for the best and assume? They'd be okay because the cichlids can handle any extra minerals. Uh, well, what I'll do is I'll I'll uh, I'll soak them in boiling water, and I'll let them sit there, and then I'll drain, re-soak in boiling water. I'll do that about maybe five times over the course of a week. Give them a scrub down with a with a bristle brush, and I don't think it's going to be horrible. I don't think it's going to be uh, I don't think it's going to be bad. John Wallace, with the fish as big as they are, I think it'd be less stress just to move them. I'm, I'm leaning in that direction, and since I'm going to move them over in waves, right, just sort of to, to help the, uh, the beneficial bacteria kind of populate and become stronger. So move over like three or four, and then move over three or four, leave them there for a week, watch them closely for a few days, then move over three or four more, and, uh, you know, feeding them real lightly through the process and just watching, watching them closely and, 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 um, I think uh, I think that's that's a better idea, and so I probably will do that rather than add the extra step of the totes. I think I think you're onto something there. I am going to keep the new 300 very simple, probably just a pile of rocks. Not sure if I'm going to add um, if I'm going to add some artificial plants or not. We'll see. We'll see. I really want to make the the focal point and the star of that tank, I want it to be the cichlids. I want it to be the colors, shapes, movement, and interaction of the African cichlids. So, so basically, it'll look a lot like this tank here, except it'll uh, maybe not have that, that tall plant. Another thing I need to do is I need to match up temperatures. Uh, the, the cichlid tank, the 210 runs currently without any heaters runs at 80 to 81 degrees, no heaters. Where is that heat coming from? It's got to be 
the ambient temperature of the garage together with the FX6 and the, the Shisei uh, pump that's in there. So they must they must be producing some heat because I don't have the heaters uh, going in the in the 210. It never gets below 80, 81 degrees. Whereas the new tank, it's probably warming up over time, but right now it's at about 77 or so. So I might put the heaters in the new, in the new tank and um, let that tank heat up. I mean, heating up 300 gallons of water. I mean, that's that's a lot of <laughs> that's a lot of juice. So um, so I would definitely want to match. If I don't have them matched within a degree or two, then I would have to put the fish in bags and float them. And I don't want to do that. I just want to plop, you know, just grab them and plop them in the new tank. That's what I want to do. So I want to get the temperatures relatively close to each other. So. All right. Any questions? Uh, Whips World talks about uh, Ohio Fish Rescue. Y yeah, I've seen their videos. I've seen what they do. I've seen how they, uh, I see how they move fish around and basically net them and, right, just the old flop and drop. They just grab them and drop them in the, the big pool or whatever and, and uh I, I suspect that that they keep that entire structure at a certain temperature, and so it's an ambient situation, which is probably what's going to happen with the 300. Eventually, the 300 will start to will start to warm up, uh, but unless it's equipment that's warming up the 210, which might very well be the case, which very often people don't take into consideration that a canister filter, right? Uh, can add heat. A, uh, I mean, there are other other ways to. There are other things that contribute. The lights. How long do you keep the lights on? What kind of lights you're running? I mean, these things can all be a source of heat for the tank. For those of you wondering, my uh, my little pleco playground is doing great. I think I have over 30 baby plecos in there. And uh, when you catch them at the right time, when you catch them at the right time, it, it's amazing because it looks like all of the substrate is wiggling. And they are really a uh, quite quite a... They're, they're very cute, but they are definitely poop factories. <laughs> Once or twice a week, I have to get in there and... And, and siphon up the poop and then I have to check the bucket real closely because inevitably there'll be at least one little wiggler in there that I then have to catch and put back in. <laughs> uh, not the smartest fish when it comes to getting away. All right, so let's see here. Any other questions you have? Patrick Maloney just got a Cape McClear VC10 Blue Sapphire. Beautiful fish. The cichlid shack will not let you down. Thank you, R. Baglio, for asking for thumbs up. I appreciate that. And a big thanks. And move this chair. And a big shout out. I forgot to mention this, and I am sorry, but a big shout out to the, the Patreon members. Without their support, these projects would not be possible without the support of the Patreon members, the Cichlid Shack, Aquarium Co-op. I mean, I have a lot of folks that really help me out a lot. And a big shout out to all of you who are um, who are Patreon. And also a big uh, shout out to those of you who have uh, purchased coffee mugs and T-shirts from the Teespring store. Very appreciated. And if you want... Uh, be sure to use live stream when you check out. I believe the 10% discount is still active. And I'm going to be adding a uh, caution or warning. I stopped for cichlids. Uh, watch for that t-shirt. It's going to be showing up pretty soon. And last but not least, for those of you who shop, shop on Amazon, be sure to uh, use this link to get to Amazon. Anything you buy on Amazon, whether it's from my store, from my aquarium recommendations, 
or anywhere on Amazon. If you use that link to get there, it gives a credit to the, to the channel. So it's a great way to support the channel. So let's turn off the commercials and Patreon members are members of the Garage Gang. <laughs> All right, let's see your questions. Who's going into what tank? All the African cichlids are going into 300. The more aggressive from the 90 gallon are going into the 210. Okay, let me show you. In that 90 gallon currently, uh, there are some fish that are going to be, that I consider the more aggressive fish. The Nicaragua, bottom right there, Nicaragua. The Salvini with the red belly. The Big Vieja. The chocolates, they hold their own and they get very big. So those fish are going to be coming over to the uh, 210. So I'm going to have to add some caves. That Salvini loves, loves her cave. Also, the uh, Jack Dempsey. Where's the Jack Dempsey? Tom Thomasita. Where's Thomasita? There she is. That beautiful Jack Dempsey is also coming over to the 210, along with the wood and probably the plants. You notice I have different plants in it. I took out the plants that were in there. They're getting a bleach bath. So the Jack Dempsey... The chocolates, the vieja, the salvini, those will be going over along with the Nicaragua. Then the AC Hecali, along with the two Geophagus serimonensis and the red shoulder, are going to uh, stay in this 90 gallon. And maybe I'll try the electric blue Acara, who's currently living uh, in the 55 behind me, with the little green tear. When the green tear uh, puts on size and the fire mouth puts on size, they'll go over to the, to the 210 as well. See the uh, electric blue. He's just a spectacular fish, picked up from a friend here in Nashville. And then, of course, I've got the fire mouth, but he only, he only comes out when the camera's not on. So, so <laughs> beautiful fish. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check out the, uh, let's check out the chat. If I missed any Super Chats, I'm sorry. I wasn't really watching. Super Chats are ways that you can support the channel by throwing a little money at the channel. It's always appreciated. And But I don't think I saw any, so I think we're okay. Yep. Okay, good. M&C Aquatics in the house. Fish Ranch. Fish Ranch is here. Amanda Wallace. All right. Some great people in this stream. All right. Ozzy the Oscar, love that. Uh, I will be adding Ozzy the Oscar, and your name reminds me, I will be adding an albino. I want to get an albino lemon or just a lemon Oscar, and I'd love to get a red tiger and grow them out, probably grow them out in the 55 and then bring them over to the, um, bring them over to the 210. I think that would look really good. I really like Oscars. Chris G, definitely more black. I agree. I agree. And I will be adding, of course, the substrate from the 210, which has a lot of black in it. But I may also pick up some of the black substrate from Petco and add that as well. Or possibly something a little bit more coarse. I don't want to add, if you if I add a fine substrate, because the, because the crushed coral is are bigger pieces. If I add a very very fine sand, it's it's going to eventually settle down in 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 between the crushed coral and I'll end up with white again. So I'll probably have to pick up 
something with a slightly larger grain size uh, than sand, than, than fine sand. So we'll see. But yeah, the black makes a big difference. I'm cruising, cruising the chat. Joe Provenzano, I transferred eight tanks into 16 new unestablished tanks, but I dosed Fritz 7 for a week straight, lost one zebra pleco out of 300 fish. That's amazing. That's amazing. And I'm a believer in that Fritz. That Fritz Zyme 7, uh, I know some people kind of uh, are, not, are not big on bacteria in a bottle. And the best, the best way, the best of all, is bringing over bacteria from an established tank. But um, I'm kind of a scaredy cat, so I bring over the bacteria from an established tank, and I do the Fritz 7. So. Maybe I'm just wasting my money, but anyway. Gear Aquatic and Pets, I have a monster tank and brackish water aquarium to move in a few months. Your journey or ordeal will help me learn important steps to follow. Yeah, and you know what? Uh, if you're moving, like physically moving, like you're moving to a new location, check out some of the earlier new fish room videos where I talked about coming over from California and getting things established brand new. Of course, in your case, you're bringing over tanks and fish. Uh, I know that John over at KG Tropicals, right, he just transferred a ton of tanks and fish. Check out some of his stuff and what he did. I'm not sure if he had a lot of fish loss or, or what his deal was. Not sure how that went. But I think it did okay. Uh, Z Zip, I will be using. Uh, I will be doing a water change on the on the 300 before bringing over the fish. I'm not worried about losing some of the uh, Fritz Zyme Seven beneficial bacteria because I've given it enough time to settle into the substrate. Beneficial bacteria is not necessarily in the water column. There is some, but a very small amount. So I'm going to do probably a 30 percent. Uh, water uh, drop in water in the 300, and then I'll replace that with water from the 210. Why would I do that? Why am I bringing water over that has nitrates and blah, blah, blah? Uh, because uh, I want to stabilize pH. pH is is the key thing I'm working on by bringing over water from the, from the older established tank. So that's the reason I'll be bringing over. About 30%, so 100 gallons is right 30 percent of the 300 100 gallons will be brought over from the 210 so about 50 percent of that tank is going to get reduced and brought over just to stabilize and equalize ph when i do that that's probably also going to bring the temperature of the two tanks very close together so that would be the time to do the transfer plus the water level in the 210 will be low and that'll make it easier to catch these fish because they are so fast so um that'll be part of the process but I don't bring the water over for beneficial bacteria because it's a, a, it's a bit of a negligible amount in the water column. And Michael Lotonero, Ben, what you're doing uh, to do transferring a few fish at a time is definitely the way to go with water testing. Yes. Yeah, you know, you do, you do gradual, you know. Build up the bacteria in one, and but you got to provide the food to the bacteria, for, and that's what the fish provide. So, yeah, gradual. That big piece of driftwood, Chris G., that big piece of driftwood is going to go into the 210. And I'll probably have to cut it up just to get it to fit. It'll be like building a ship in a bottle, right? I mean, the thing is, is ginormous, but... Um, I'm going to add it to the 210 along with some um, some tan-colored uh, river rock. So I've got some tan-colored river rock. And, I, and I'm probably going to leave behind some of the aragonite and crushed coral that's in the 210 only because uh, the KH is so low here. I need some kind of uh, hardening. I need the water. I need some hardness added to the water. And, uh, and of course, your... your uh, your crushed coral aragonites can do that 
and a little bit of that in a uh, South American tank doesn't hurt. I think Corey over at Aquarium Co-op, he adds a little bit of crushed coral. John Wallace, a Pleco giveaway. <laughs> right now, they're the size of a comma. A lot of them are like, you know, you, you got, I, I got to use a flashlight to find them. Uh, a couple of albinos in there, really cute. A couple of them look uh, really speckled. I, there was a snowball I, that might have been the dad of some of them. So we'll see. We'll see, but not a bad idea. Don't know how I'd ship them. You'd have to come by and get them. <laughs> All right, let's see here. I spoke to the folks at Fritz. There's an, there's an interview I did. You can look at it in my, uh, in my back videos. I did a, an interview with a representative from Fritz. I was very, very impressed with the thinking that goes into the Fritz Zyme products, just like I was very impressed with the Sarah, uh, the, the actual thinking and philosophy of the company. Uh, peas and Haps Forever got myself a beautiful five inch midnight blue peacock for 20 bucks. Man, I just hate you, Peas and Haps Forever. <laughs> Those things are usually like 50 bucks, and then you got to pay like 50 for shipping. <laughs> That's a score, my friend. Big score. Sunder. Sunder, be quiet, man. I'm already overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to know if I'm going to get a bigger tank, a 400 gallon, 500. What I'm thinking of doing is just adding uh, wood framing and plexi and just turn the entire garage into a tank that we could then view from the top of the stairs. <laughs> and then if it gets real hot, we can dive in, you know, snorkel around. No, I think 300 is going to be it for now. I am going to be putting I'm going to be putting a rack on my left here. I'm going to put a rack because I have a beautiful 60 gallon acrylic, a cup a 29 gallon, a couple nano tanks, uh, a couple 29 gallon tanks, the beta tank. The beta tank will probably go up to my bedroom. But I just have these miscellaneous tanks and that are just sort of peppered around. So I want to get them all onto one rack. So I'll probably go, um, I'll go real inexpensive. I'll go get some cinder blocks, cinder blocks and some boards and do something like that. If it's good enough for uh, Zenzo's fish room at Tozawa Tanks, cinder blocks, and bo it's good enough for me. So <laughs> I noticed the other day he's got cinder blocks on his tanks. Hey, someone came through with a super chat. Let's see here. Chris G. Awesome. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate that a lot. And GP comes in. All right, buddy. Ten bucks for a rock. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate that. Ray says that Joey, the king of... D yeah, 2,000 gallon. I mean, that's crazy. 2,000 gallon. That's, that's, that's awesome. There's some, there are several folks, if you search around YouTube, there are some folks out there that have, you know, like... like public marine you know public aquarium size size tanks and um, it would certainly be a lot of fun and i think i think that your bigger tanks honestly when i look at the work i have to do to to get this eight gallon horizon tank cleaned up it gets a carpet of algae it gets all the work i have to do on that tank is more time intensive than the work I have to do to clean the 210 or the 90. I put more time into the eight gallon. So I think if you had just this giant monster tank, right? And then you have, you know, like 400 gallon, uh, you know, uh, moving bed uh, and, and, and sponges and, you know, all this massive filtration unit, that gets, you know, once every three months or so, you pull everything out, you rinse it, you put it all back in. Every now and then you jump in and you clean the walls from the inside, right? Yeah. Anyway, I think that would be a blast. It would be so much fun. Let's see here. Crush Coral. Crush Coral and Aragonite, Cat Sailor. 
I think you're probably going to get a, a very similar outcome with both of them. In my opinion, I haven't tested it, but I've noticed similar stability uh, and KH with both. Interestingly enough, on the bag from Carib C, on the bag it says that the aragonite will continue to mineralize your aquarium for the life of the aquarium. So for those of you who occasionally have suggested that we swap out because it, it exhausts, it doesn't get exhausted apparently. According to Carib C, who I trust, the reputable company, they say it will continue to mineralize your water for the life of the aquarium. And that's where your fish get their minerals. They can only get it from the minerals that are in your aquarium. So this is why you've got, you should add something even to your low pH uh, tanks. A couple tablespoons of crushed crush coral wouldn't be a bad idea. Add a little mineral supplementation. Of course, you can do it also with, with uh, drops and other kinds of things, right? But uh, I'd say they're both about the same. I'd say they're both about the same. That would be my guess. And... Uh, All right. Yeah, 2,000 gallons, that would be something. John Wallace shared the, uh, the link to Tozawa's tanks. If you folks are not familiar with uh, Zenzo, a great guy, affiliated and currently working with the Aquarium Co-op. And I'm sure uh, getting ready for... Um, for Aquashella Dallas, I spoke with him on an email a couple of days ago, and they will be there. And hey, Emin, good to see you, my friend. Emin Fountain in the house. There must be a perfect size tank for ease of maintenance and time. I think once you have once you have a tank established in the one hundred to four hundred range. It once it's established, once it's seasoned, and I've got to really stress that because you, you folks know that I use a deep substrate as the home for my beneficial bacteria, primary home. But you can't really count on that until that tank has become seasoned or established. And I have found from experience that, and from mistakes that were costly, that can take three to six months. But once your tank with a deep substrate has become really well established, uh, it, it becomes very, very rock solid, rock, rock solid. And uh, I think somewhere between 100, maybe 75 to, um, to 300, 75 to 400, you would really have to really mess up to throw that tank off. I mean, think about it. You could probably drop a teaspoon of ammonia in a 300 gallon, gallon, I don't suggest you do that, but uh, a teaspoon of bleach, I mean, it, it dilutes so much. The water dilutes pollutants so much that you really have to mess up. Whereas a little five gallon nano beta tank or a little my little horizon tank, um, it can go south real quick and pollute up really, really quick, become covered in, in green algae instantly. And uh, so to me, those nanotanks, those of you who keep nanotanks looking beautiful, you are my heroes. Because once you establish these big ones, it's, uh, it's spectacular, but it, it, it does become pretty simple. Pretty, pretty simple. All right, let's see. Michael agrees. Michael Lodinero, smaller tanks are definitely more work. Plus, don't forget, Ben, you'll be setting up an algae scrubber, something I'm very interested in seeing how that works out for you. It worked out really well in California. I had one on, um, on a 100-gallon. Nitrates averaged at around 10. And every week I had this treat for my fish. And... Um, the peacocks in particular, and the OBs, when you think about it, OBs have a little bit of uh, a little bit of mabuna in them. They love, I would just open up the algae scrubber and leave it in the aquarium for several hours. I'd come back later, I wouldn't even have to clean it. I mean, they'd have cleaned it off. So I just attach it back to the wall, 
and um, turn the light, turn the, the special lights on, the special frequency lights that are ideal for the growth of algae. All right, let's see. Uh, Ozzy, I think crushed coral, and uh, they they will help with the KH, and we'll see. Uh, we'll see. That's my whole theory on this 300. That's why I put the whole bed of, of aragonite crushed coral for uh, KH. So we'll keep an eye on it. I added a big bag of crushed coral to the sump on the 210, and the KH did go from low to low medium. It went from low to, to the lower part of medium. So it did help. It's still on the lower side. Emmon Fountain, got to agree, my 200 gallon is real easy. Yeah, I'll tell you, these bigger tanks, once you get them rolling. I've been told aragonite, Zen Ginger, I've been told aragonite was better if the flow isn't consistent because coral tends to trap mulm and junk. Yeah, I don't know. I, it, it's, it would be interesting to see if it's perceptible. You'd have to get two tanks do crushed coral in one, do aragonite in the other. Interestingly enough, when you order crushed coral, very often the bag comes and it has, a, we'll say on it, a large percentage of aragonite. Uh, the crushed coral, when you look, you'll find lots of little shells. So it's not like they're taking an old coral reef and breaking it up. There's a lot of little shells in there, and they're calling that crushed coral, which I guess, in a manner of speaking, it is. Uh, Brian, I wouldn't put a Salvini in, Brian Park, I wouldn't put a Salvini in with the African cichlids for two reasons. One, they do need a, a lower pH uh, than, the, than the cichlids. They need a softer water. And I just don't know. I don't know how they would react to each other. I mean, I'm, there's probably someone out there, probably someone who's going to watch this video and go, yeah, I've got a Salvini in with my haps. He's fine. But... Um, I have found that species specific uh, in this tank here, I mean, I've got like the impossible going on. I mean, what what's in that tank, what you're looking at there are what could be considered some of the most aggressive African cichlids. Venusus, living stone eye, right? You have a hawk in there. There's some peaceful ones, too. I mean, there's a Bicolor 500. There's a um, Lethronops oculatus. There's a Johnson Eye. There's some of the more peaceful ones, too, but some very aggressive ones. And yet, I mean, and they haven't eaten, so they're, they're, they're as ornery as they get what you're seeing right now. doesn't mean there aren't moments. The other day, the uh, Tangerine Tiger for some reason, was chasing um, the Taiwan Reef. And I was almost at the point where I was going to scoop him out, but um, he, he settled down. So, I don't know. I wouldn't want to necessarily mess with this mix. Now, that being said, that being said, I am going to be adding um, a Fusco, a Buchochromus notatania. Maybe a polystigma. I'm not sure if I want to add another Nimbochromus in there. Maybe a polystigma. I do want to add some more fish, more aggressive fish. So uh, so we'll see. We'll see. But for right, I mean, for quite, quite a while now, and, I, and I'm not, I mean, I keep them well fed. I keep them very well fed. I use that combination of food that I use, right? Extreme, uh, Pisces Energetics, uh, some cobalt probiotic. I give them frozen krill once or twice a week. I mean, their their tummies are full, so maybe that has something to do with it. The water parameters are good. I've uh, turned the uh, the wave maker down so it only runs for maybe two hours a day. A little bit in the morning, a little bit in the evening, just to stir up the detritus so it goes into the filters. But I don't run the, the wave maker all day. I have lots of surface breakup from the uh, sump and from the FX6. 
Maybe I'll run the uh, Wave Maker longer after I remove the FX6 just to oxygenate, right? Maybe move the Wave Maker up because you know they these big fish, they man, they need a lot of oxygen. So, at any rate, to answer your question, no. I wouldn't put a Salvini. I wouldn't necessarily... I mean, I've put... What's the most extreme thing I've put in? I've put in uh, clown loaches. I had them with my cichlids in California. They got along fine. They thrived. I had three of them in there. They were wonderful fish. I had... Uh, I've had plecos in with them. And... I had a um, a paratilapia polini, which is a uh, a fish from uh, Lake Mozambique, I believe, not from the Rift Lakes. And uh, but that that one, I think that one was living with the uh, South Americans, so it wasn't with the with these guys. So, Joe, I I I don't know. I mean, I'm, uh, the thing about that move. And it's a good question that you're asking. Joe is asking, uh, do you have? Do you think uh, the new tank move is going to upset the peacefulness in the tank? And uh, it's a good question. I would say, I would say I'll, I'm going to keep an eye on it, like I always do. But I would think that more space, and really not really giving them anything to claim or fight over. Because I'm not going to have a lot of decorations in there. I'm not putting uh, the uh, SpongeBob aeration unit. I'm not going to put it in there. And <laughs> I'm just going to have some rocks and maybe not even have that plant. I might bring the plant over just for beneficial bacteria initially, but then get rid of it. So there's not going to be really anything to claim. So, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping it's going to be it's going to be smooth. And seamless. So we'll see, Joe. We'll see. Fingers crossed. And keep in mind, I'm going to be leaving the 210 running because I'm going to have to do some changes, right? Adding the uh, the the new substrate, bringing in that piece of uh, driftwood, that massive piece of driftwood, right? Uh, I'm going to be doing some changes. So that tank, the 210 is going to be available. So if somebody loses their mind... I can put them back in the 210 for at least a month. It's going to be empty. So it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to have a fish or two in there. So what I'm thinking is I'll work with um, with James Largo and get some new cichlids and use the 210 sort of as the hospital tank, leave them in there for a month, and then bring them over to the 300 and see how that goes. So... <clears throat> All right. Somebody having a problem with a question here? Let's see. If somebody has a hot question, go ahead and re-ask it, because I am looking at the stream now. And I noticed that somebody got... Their comments deleted multiple times. All right, any questions? Shoot them. Z zip, a free guppy QC, you could save some feeder guppies. <laughs> For some reason, we've gotten into guppies. <laughs> I guess some people are using guppies as feeder fish these days. I guess that they breed so much, it makes sense. They're so pretty, but all right. Now, you folks know I'm not a guppy person. So uh, if you folks have an answer for guppy, go ahead and, and give, give them an answer, because I am definitely not your guppy expert. I sure love those ones. Are they called snakeskin? Is that what they're called? There's a certain kind of guppy. Absolutely beautiful. I've also seen lemon guppies. Real real yellow, really pretty. Uh, but I'm not I'm not the person you go to for guppies. You need to go to Cory uh, at the aquarium co-op or uh, 
Who else? Who'd be a good guppy person, folks? Who out there on YouTube is a good guppy person? Opinions on common goldfish from Jesus Ayoso. Jesus Ayoso, am I pronouncing your name right? Okay, folks, if you have opinions on goldfish, go ahead and add them to the chat. You know I'm not a goldfish guy. <laughs> Oh, that's right. Coffee and guppies. Coffees and coffee and goldfish. Let's see. Peas and haps forever. My current blend of food, let's see. This is the magic blend right here. Always got to shake it up because the smarter, smaller pieces will move to the bottom. See here? There's probably six kinds of foods in there. Ooh, that smells yummy. Six kinds of food. Maybe more. I've got uh, Sarah, cichlid food. I've got the Sarah green, so they get some veggies. I've got, um, there's even a little bit of, uh, that I just got a sample pack, and I added a little bit of, uh, a little bit of Vibrabites. I just got a sample pack sent to me, and there's Extreme in here, Extreme Peewee, and Extreme Big Fella, and there's some Cobalt Probiotics, and did I mention Piscine Energetics? And it is just a uh, buffet of deliciousness, and <clears throat> the fish go nuts, absolutely nuts. Here, watch me get splashed here. That was the most low-key feeding I've ever done. Usually they get me all wet. So anyway, yeah, I, I like to mix it up. And I used to do it before, and then the rep from Sarah, just out of the blue, without me bringing it up, the rep from Sarah, I think we were on camera. It's in that Sarah interview. The rep goes, really, Ben? Uh, we've done a lot of research, and our food is really low in phosphates, no additives, no soy, nothing that's been genetically modified. It the, Probably the cleanest food around, I still suggest that you mix their diet, that you use other things. Having that come from a rep, instead of having a rep say, this is all you'll ever need and you'll never have to feed another food, and to have someone be that, that honest and that humble to say, go ahead and add other types of food because it's better for your fish, I thought that, number one, it confirmed what I had been doing, and number two, I just thought it was a real good uh, sign for the integrity of that company and its representatives. So um, so that's what I do. I go ahead and, uh, and I make my own blend, and some of you, I've sent you uh, some of it in uh, a little dime bag, right? <laughs> I've sent you a little, uh, a little sample, and uh, I've gotten great reports back. Maybe someday I'll 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 uh, I'll create Ben's blend 
Ben's Blend, and I'll, I'll uh, package it and sell it, and you guys can. <laughs> and then I also uh, give them, uh, there's this frozen food uh, called Cichlid Delight. Cichlid Delight. It's got garlic in it. I found it to be really effective if you have a finicky eater. Cichlid Delight. I throw a cube or two in there. Uh, and also, I give them frozen krill. So they'll usually get a treat uh, once or twice a week. So usually right before I'm going to clean out the socks in the sump, because if some of it gets sucked in into the, you know, into the sump, it really can clog things up. All right, let's see. Let's see here. If somebody's asking about guppies as feeders, someone's talking about mutt guppies, a mutt guppy. I think I'd be happy if I had guppies that I had kept and and had watched them for about a month or two and knew they were rock solid healthy before I'd start feeding them to my fish because who knows what kind of parasite or disease they might have. But I've never fed live fish to my fish, except when one of the fish had babies and uh, nature took its course. Joe, South Americans love Ben's Blend. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay. Now, one of the things to watch for, of course, with your food is that you're not feeding them a lot of fillers because then your fish are using uh, energy to move fillers through their body, which are giving them no nutritional support. You know, it's like if you eat it, if you eat fast food all the time or you eat junk food all the time, you're using more energy to move the body through than you are uh, getting from the food, so... Ray, nothing splashes like an Oscar. Now, I don't know, Ray. I don't know. I went, There's a guy on YouTube that has a famous video where he's feeding a dovi, and he gets drenched, I mean, from head to toe. So uh, find that video. Feeding a dovi. I think it's like two minutes long. It's got like 10 million views. And uh, so he, but yeah, I imagine. I imagine a big Oscar can make a huge splash. Now, imagine the kind of splash you'll get from that Malawi trout when he hits 15 inches. When he gets to be about 15 inches, his tail's going to be about this big. So if he wants to he wants to splash me, he's going to splash me. All right. So, I think that's it for now, my friends. I thank all of you for for sitting in. Thank you for the uh Thank you for the super chats. Those of you that hit me up with a super chat, big shout out to uh, all of you for sitting in. Thank you for those of you that gave it a thumbs up, and thank you to those of you that subscribed. I appreciate you very much. And I think what we'll do is go ahead and end off at this point. And Ben, any idea if an electric blue jacked MC will get to a point where they are not so delicate? I don't know. I, I certainly had a, a, I was a little bit heartbroken with mine, but if I was to buy another electric blue Jack Dempsey, I'd buy a big one because to have made it to that size, it means that genetically they're strong. So I wouldn't buy a baby. I'd buy a, a bigger, if you can find a bigger electric blue, three inches, four inches and hardy looking, uh, I would say, okay. Uh, but I wouldn't buy a little one because it's, it's just a roll of the dice. If you saw that video, you know what I'm talking about. You know, you fall in love with them and then they just roll over and die. Ray Cooper is feeding uh, cichlid flakes with probiotics and garlic from Seachem. Seachem's a good company. R. Baglio, good luck with the transfer. Thank you for that. I got it on the mutt, on the mutt guppies, Zen Ginger. Thank you, Peas and Haps. 
for saying it was a great live stream. And let's go ahead with that. Let's go ahead and wrap this up. And you folks are the best. You rock. You know that. And I will see you this coming Saturday. We'll do another live stream. And hopefully, I'll be able to turn the camera around and you'll have some big African cichlids in that 300 gallon. So uh, stay tuned for that, my friends. I will see you. Uh, I will see you next week. Bye bye.